I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. We have with us today Abadir Bar, who is a lawyer. Maybe I should say Abadir Bar Esquire. <laughs> and well, before I go on, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I just wanted to uh, explain a little bit, first of all, what he does. And second of all, I, I just wanted to reiterate what this channel is about. So first of all, Abadir is a fascinating man. I came across him in the wonderful world of internet, social media, and he is an immigration lawyer. And I think that he probably has such fascinating perspective because, well, this is the reason for my channel is that my niche is that I don't have a niche. I interview heavyweight boxing champions of the world. I'll, I'll interview the person next door because I think that everybody you know, has a view of somebody, but all it truly is, is their view. And once we get to really know each other, then you see that this person ticks to a whole different way than what you thought. And so back to you <laughs> with my long winded intro, I just, I find it very fascinating that um, you're involved in this career of helping people out in situations that they don't know or never considered they would need help with until they're stuck in it. And it's something most of us never deal with or never think of. You're an immigration yeah. lawyer, people stuck, green cards, things like that. I have so many questions for you. Right, and I'm happy to answer them. So, uh, you know, thank you for the introduction. I am an immigrant myself. I, I came to this country uh, when I was eight from Somalia. Uh, we immigrated due to the civil war. So I went through the immigration process, you know, as, as a immigrant. And then now I'm practice, practicing in it as an attorney. So I've kind of been on all sides of uh, the immigration uh, field. Right. And so, like I said, it's kind of like, you know, nobody thinks about needing a lawyer if they get arrested, but that's unfortunately more prevalent. People get arrested, but, you know, a little bit in the news, people are aware of detention centers and, you know, people are trying to get this person in and they're struggling with these issues for years. And you're in it. Like, that's your life. That's what you're dealing with day and night. That's your whole plate, right? Yeah, absolutely. So interesting you said that, you know, people don't call a lawyer until they need a lawyer. Uh, and, uh, you know, in law school, they teach us, you know, you can use the law as a shield or as a sword. Uh, as a shield is when you get in trouble, right? When you're arrested and you need a defense. Uh, the sword is when you're trying to, uh, you know, affirmatively, uh, gain something, right? So a lot of businesses and corporations use that for mergers and acquisitions. Uh, they use it in real estate, right? When we're trying to uh, acquire a home or a commercial space uh, and we're trying to expand and, get, you know, get something. So with my field, same happens. You know, sometimes people call me up when they're in immigration court, they're detained by ICE uh, and, they, and they need legal defense. And other times people... Uh, don't need me, need me necessarily at the time, but they want something uh, or they, you know, they need something, but uh, they, without any pressure on them of, of them that need a defense, they come to a lawyer to say, can you help me file for my family members overseas? Or can you help me get my, you know, citizenship? I had a hard time when I filed and you know, I possibly got denied or they asked for more evidence. So, you know, I get both halves of that instance where people come to me because they're, they're looking for something more or are they coming to me looking for help? In That's very interesting. I, I never thought of that or heard of that about the uh, sword versus the uh, shield. But mm -hmm. it, it seems like in your line of work, even when you're using the sword, you're still shielding because um, most of the people that you're dealing with are, are in a struggle and, and they're dealing like it's almost like they're missing that basic um, freedom of rights that the average mm -hmm. American takes for granted. And so it's like, you know how like in the movie sometimes, you, you know, they say, oh, don't take your work home and people see awful things during the day, you know, maybe a cop or in a rough neighborhood or, or an ER doctor. And then they come home and they have to, you know, cuddle with their kid and read a storybook like everything is fine. And I feel like your real life having to deal with that balance. Yes, that's correct. So, you know, in immigration law, as you said, uh, pointed out. Actually, most times when I have a consultation with a with a potential client, there's a life problem 
that they have. And this is why they're coming to you. Even like, as you said, when it's not necessarily they're, they're in uh, removal proceedings, they could just be regular. They have a green card, they want citizenship. But there's a, there's a reason why. And I always try, often try to find out what the reason is uh, that, that brought them to me. And then by solving that problem for them, that life problem, uh, you're able to give them the relief that they need. Uh, and oftentimes it, it's something, you know, complex. Sometimes somebody will be a green card holder for 30 years, Ari, and then they'll come in and say, I need to get citizenship. And I'm like, why? Why now? Right? I mean, you've been a green card holder 30 years, you live in life. Well, um, I want to be able to, you know, go back and, uh, you know, uh, retire in Egypt or retire in Brazil or China or wherever. Uh, and uh, as a green card holder, you can't be out of the country for more than six months. So now that life has changed and they have this need, uh, so you're trying to solve that that life problem where they won't be able to retire, uh, you know, uh, in a place that's more affordable, that has an easier uh, uh, cost of living. Yeah, everything so, is fine as long as they stay in the United States. But now that they want to adjust, they got work to do. Yeah, yeah. So that's that. Um, and the, the the second part of your question of the of the taking the, the work home, it's a very emotionally um, it's a job that requires a lot of emotional uh, investments uh, because yeah. again, you're dealing with people's real life problems, right? And uh, I'm doing paperwork, legal motions and briefs and filing applications and such to, to solve that. But you're also managing people's emotions and expectations uh, and that has a certain weight on you. And then you have to yeah. you know, sort of take home and it's a lot of uh, kind of detoxing now when you go home to your family. Yeah. And and back to what you said in the beginning about the struggle. I mean, sometimes we get a letter in the mail and it freaks us out. So there's different levels of stress. It doesn't have to be all the way. When somebody's yes. life is disrupted, you want to know that in your home, you have your privacy and your peace. And uh, it's tough on people. Absolutely. Yeah. And especially when they don't know, right? So a lot of immigrants don't know the system so well, right? So, so you know, you and I may get a piece of letter in the mail. Uh, look, so one good example is where a lot of immigrants will get the jury duty letter, right? Uh, and then we can say, you know, ask for the uh, reschedule the jury duty because we have uh, something going on this week and it's fine. It's no biggie, right? We, we know that it's not going to be uh, something that's going to you know, really cause a, a problem to our life. But to an immigrant, they, they freak out. I'm not a citizen. I got this jury duty. I got a respondents. I mean, they really, you know. They don't understand it. That's fine. Just check the boxes. You're not a citizen and send it back. But no, are they going to, you know, so they want to come in and, and, uh, and ask a lot of questions because they don't know the system. Just like if you and I were living in Ukraine today and we got right. something written in the Ukrainian, <laughs> we'd have a feel a little bit. Right. You know, you remind me of the, you know, my friend, he was telling me if they really wanted to collect all the illegals, they would just go to the public school yard at 2 p.m. any single day. Um, in other words, there are things that the government, um, different government uh, agencies won't step over. So to them, it's scary because they're at risk. But you as a professional are realistic about knowing, don't worry, this paper you're filling out is going to stay in that agency. It's not going to be given to the agency you're afraid of. And it's easier said than done. For you, it's, it's less, you understand it. For them, it's like, it's a, it's a fear, which is yes. reasonable. Yes. Yeah. And a lot of times I always tell people, uh, you know, us as lawyers, what kind of, you know, separates us from the, from the lay person in terms of uh, uh, legal ramifications is that a lot of people know that, okay, I, I must be a citizen to have these rights, or I must be a green card holder to not be here unlawfully and such, right? Uh, but they don't quite know the, the, the how to get there and the, the reasons right. why. And studying and practicing law, we do. So you know, I, they'll take my word for it when I tell them with, with you know, high certainty that filling out this this jury uh, uh, duty demand will not go to ICE because I know, like you said, it's it's not something they don't have the, the they don't have the the agency manpower literally to to you know to collect all these people. Just like they don't have the manpower to send ICE agents to every single public school at 2 p.m. in the country, they just they just don't have the manpower to do that and sit and wait and then stop each parent. And say, what's your status, right? They just they don't. So, and then and some people believe they, they don't want to actually catch every illegal because they are the backbone of the country. You ever hear absolutely. that theory? They'll yeah, do the absolutely. work that the regular American doesn't want to. Yeah, I mean, it? it's absolutely true. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, me, well, I have a uh, a huge sample size because we have thousands of clients. Immigration is a uh, uh, volume based, not corporate level. Where 
some of my colleagues that do corporate law might work on five or six huge, you know, multi-party cases a year. Uh, your average immigration attorney might get 500 new clients a year, 600 new clients, 700, you know, so it's a whole difference. Yeah, it's a much more volume based uh, 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 practice. So, you know, over, over a span of years, you deal with thousands of clients and then even more in, in terms of consultations. So after knowing that, and then when you come in and you're asking them questions in the intake, nearly all of them work. <laughs> and then right. a high percentage of them pay taxes, high percentage of them don't take any public benefits. So if you scoop up everybody that's unlawful, it it's gonna disrupt our economy at yeah. the very least, if not create you know a, a huge uh, 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 reduction to our productivity. Right, which is interesting because um... It, it puts your career in an interesting position. You you make a career out of the fact that they have a struggle, but you don't want them to have a struggle because you seem like a good guy. So there needs to be a balance. But I guess there's always going to be a struggle. So might as well be the right person Correct. doing the job. Yeah. And then with us, with this country, uh, thankfully, the United States is a country of immigrants. So it's always going to be. So I always tell people, I'm not I'm not a tax attorney. I'm not I'm, I, for the most part. I don't have repeat clients. Right, a tax attorney, if you're my client, Ari, I take care of you this year, I file taxes. You'll be back next year to file taxes again. If I do my job and get you the green card of citizenship, we right. part ways, you know? And then I have to get a whole new person who needs that. And so with this country, there's, we always have immigrants. There's mm -hmm. enough of that to continue this kind of work. Interesting. So I had this question that I was jotting down as you were talking, but I think you already answered it, but I'm just going to go over it, you know, is that... Um, these people that have faith in you, I was going to say, do they have faith because of your power or because of your work ethic or, or knowledge? And, and it seemed, it sounds to me like it's a mixture of both. You, you have an, an amount of knowledge as a result of, you know, being in the industry. And also, um, you probably have some, this tactic sound too sneaky. You probably have strategies right. that they have no clue how to implement you know who the county clerk is if you know if that's a thing you know that oh who's the judge on the docket okay this okay that you know oh he doesn't do too well in the morning maybe we should go for an afternoon session like you you seem like you know from one person who's street smart to another you seem like a guy that runs your business with street smarts and you're gonna make decisions based on real life psychological um, evaluations of the moment that that's will be in the benefit of your clients. And a, yeah, a lot of lawyers won't do that. Yeah, that's sure. correct. So what, what a lot of lawyers uh, will, will tell you that uh, within our field, it's judgment calls, right? And uh, a lot of times there is no clear cut right or wrong answer. It's your judgment and you're arguing for something, right? In front of a judge, you're saying, I may argue this point, the prosecutor or the Department of Homeland Security prosecutor might argue the other point, the judge tries to figure out which one is more persuasive, right? But uh, but depending on the judge, depending on the argument, either or could be uh, 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 more persuasive or correct for that person, whoever wins, because it's a winner take all system. I would say when I when I speak to clients, what you know brought you to our office, uh, experience is always number one, right? People want somebody experienced uh, that they that the person is knowledgeable about uh, the field of law and that the person. Um, we'll make a good judgment call. But then secondly, like right there, probably, that's like number one, one A. And one B is, uh, do they have confidence in you? And a lot of times clients tell me, you're an immigrant advocate, you've been through this process, you know, you have been on the other side of this table. You can right? relate to Yes, and confidence. that means something to them, right? That means something to them. And then, and kind of the mixture of both of me having experience, me being an immigrant, that's created a situation where I've, uh, I've, I've been able to, uh, to, to get clients to understand and say, okay, I have uh, trust and faith in you and you'll fight for me. And so that's been my reputation over the you know, past few years now, 10 years almost, is that the situation where people feel like they have confidence in my ability to fight for them, my ability to understand their position and my experience will, 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 uh, will guide them into uh, making the, uh, a, a right, the right call, making good judgment. So, Wonderful. Yeah, Wonderful. that's what's happened. Thank you, Abadir. I really yeah. appreciate you coming on.
Um, yes. Just uh, a little shout out for you, <laughs> your business, Abadir Bar Law Firm. Maybe you'll send me some links to put in the description. And of course, I always forget. So please don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, thanks so much. I really appreciate having you on. I, I've learned a lot. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate the time. And uh, hopefully it's beneficial to people. And I'll sure to uh, uh, like the page and I'll send you our, our website and our, and our social media handle. Wonderful. Take care. Take care.